Welcome to Eagles Haven Ministry and Eagles Haven Upper Room in the midweek service. Just thank you for joining us. Uh, we've been having some great services and we're putting all of uh, Tanaya's worship on the archives of the video as of Newstream as well as in YouTube. And you can look on the, on the screen and you see eliahuchannel.com or go to YouTube and click Ha Ruha Eliyahu and pick up Tina's worship music with the words so you can uh, learn them they're, they're to give out freely tonight's topic is a fun topic it's similar to what we've been doing before we've been doing uh, the, the uh, um, Amuna or believe this um, uh, faith which is a pagan deity we've been doing uh, also the the favor, the also the favor versus the grace. Other uh, peace pack, uh, which is uh, sh versus the peace. Hello there. So we're having all kinds of fun electrical problems today. Now it's me. All right. So the other day you had problems like that. Okay, so we're going to go, we're going to find out about another uh, co competitive uh, uh, um, add-on word, and we're going to look at the history. How many just don't like when somebody calls you something and that's not your name? Okay? Uh, we have to understand that, you know, like in prison they call the inmates blue. And that's not their name. And then they call them a number or whatever. And sometimes some names and handles are given to people and they're given to them in mockery and ridicule. And then it sticks with people. It sticks with them. Okay? When uh, in, in Los Angeles and other towns, they call the pochos Chicanos in mockery, in ridicule. A half-breed, blood-cut Mexican American, they call him Chicano Pochos, and he was in mockery. But then, after a few years, he became prideful. Okay, so we're going to look how things got hitchhiked in. Uh, we're going to look at the history, and we're going to give in the Christian community the benefit of the doubt. The title of this message is Nazarene versus Cristianos, or Christians, or Christians. Now. In the scriptures, he talks about the mouth of two or three witnesses. Let every word be established. Now, we already know in the Christian community, there's a failure to communicate or to study to show yourself approved, a workman writing, dividing the word of truth. So, and one of the proof is that many ministers, many shepherds, and I say this in love because I used to call myself that title too, will call themselves pastors. But when, it's only found once in the book of Ephesians in the lineup of the fivefold ministry. And when you look it up in the Greek, it really means shepherd or shepherdess or shepherd. Okay? It doesn't mean the green pastor. And anybody that loves carne asada, burrito, that's a, a, a carne out to pastor, el pastor, you know that they're in the big, mighty range, the field. And that's the place where the cows or the sheep or the goats poop on. Okay? So, we don't want to be that field. Uh, we want to be the, put the sheep on the green pasture, but we want to be the shepherds leading them into those places. Okay? So, in the same way that that's easily and lovingly corrected, um, we're going to do the same with the word Christian tonight. And I advise you to study to show yourself tonight the things I'm going to teach you. You must make notes or prepare yourself and remind yourself and use it as a stored information because this is what you're called. Our Messiah in the King James Thomas Chain reference scriptures with red letter, he specifically calls himself something. And we're going to look at what he called himself. And if we're followers of the Messiah Yeshua, we should be calling ourselves the same as a follower, okay? So, we're going to start off with, uh, with the book of, of Ma'achi, or in Spanish, et Hechos, or Acts, okay? And we're going to look up in the ver chapter 11, verse 26. And it says here in verse 26, and we'll start at 25, and, and Barnabas departed from Tarsus to seek Shaul, Saul, and 
when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. So it was that for a whole year they assembled with the congregation and taught a great many people. And the disciples were called Christianos, they say Christians, in Antioch. This is one of the, the verses they pull out of the hat to claim themselves. The problem is this word Christians with an S, okay? The historical fact of the matter is that in the, in the call the Cathetical School of Alexandria in the year 190 they had a meeting and they changed the word from Nazarene that was originally Nazarene which we're going to discover that to Messianics and eventually by the year 310 Constantine historically made a proclamation that all Orthodox Catholics at the time because the Roman Catholics did not exist Orthodox Catholic will be called Christianos okay so Here's a Roman emperor. He worshipped the sun, Mithras. He had a, he had a meteor crash and he, he won a victorious war. He used the X with the P as part of his cruz and uh, on the shields of his men. And he, because he won a battle, he proclaimed and declared that all of Rome that have accepted the Isus, it wasn't even Isus or J-Man yet, will be Christianos okay and so he declared it because in his mind he knew the Greek understanding of the term Christos or Christis the anointed ones which would back then in the Roman days the, every few years there would be different anointed ones Jupiter will be one uh, Mercury uh, uh, Hermes um, Is, uh, Zeus, they would have different anointed ones and basically would they get the statue, marble statue and pour oil and declare that one the supreme of all the rest and that would declare the anointed one Okay, the difference from the anointed one of the Hebrew Messiah Yahushua there is only one Mashiach there's only one anointed one there's a lot of claimers of anointed one I anoint myself to pray and worship and put on my anointed cap for my position it says Kodoshi uh, of Yahuwah on my head and this is my time where I anoint myself but that doesn't make me a Messiah a Mashiach that just makes me uh, prepare myself for the anointing of the word to go out the Shema to go out and minister in spontaneous flow and, and so we must understand the terms and the uh, understanding of the Greek and and uh, the difference from the Greek mentality, the European mentality, and then the deep roots of the Hebraic mentality. Okay? Now, so here's when they first called, but I'm giving you the, the original origin was Messianics, followers of the Messiah. And before that, before 190, they were called the Nasarines. All right? Not with no T. But it was with not with a Z. So we're going to look this up historically. We're going to look this up. I mean, excuse me, through the scriptures. Okay. The next verse. It's twice because Christians with an S is only once in the scripture. It says by the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. So they they wanted to make sure they got two or three witnesses. Okay. So let's look at uh, Maashi or Acts chapter 26 now. Okay. And we're going to give the Christian community the benefit of doubt of the references that they use in this European Greek translations okay now in chapter 26 we're gonna look at verse 27 and read 27 28 29 and it's written like this and he says here King Agrippa do you believe in the Nabi in we don't use the word prophet because that means fortune teller it's a Greek word for fourth and fourth tall teller. I know that you do believe. Then Agrippa interrupted and said to Shaul, You almost persuade me to be to become a Christian. Now here's the next time it's used the word Christian. But it does it does not Christians, it's Christian. 
Originally, it was Messianic people. All right? He never used the word Nasari. He never used it at all. All right? But he used it as a, as a follower of the Messiah, the Hebrew Messiah. Okay? Now, if he was a Greek, one of the other, uh, uh, some of the other translations from the African trial, other translations, they add the, that the root was Cretan. Okay? And we're going to look at the root of the Cretan language, why, where this word Cretan comes from. But they, they use the word Cretan, which means idiot. Okay? Now you say that's kind of crazy for a guy to call himself an idiot. But now let's back up to verse 24. And then you can get the picture why some people think it was the original word idiot or Cretan. Okay? In 24 he says, be, when he's approaching this uh, Agrippa, Now as he thus made his defense, Fetus said with a loud voice, Shaul, you are beside yourself. What? You are crazy. Much learning has driven you mad, insane. All right? So, and, but he said, I am not crazy or mad, most noble fetus, this, this, excuse me, but speak the words of truth and reason. So he's letting him know he's speaking truth and reason, but it, he told him, you're going crazy. Your much learning's made you mad. How many heard that about this congregation? Those guys study too much, and they're going crazy with their beliefs. They've gone too far. Okay? Now, so in his Greek mentality, he's thinking this guy's a Cretan. So I can see why some of the different translations, they would think that the original word here wasn't even Messianic or Nazarene. It was because he didn't have a Hebrew mindset to say the word Nazarene. He would use the word Cretan because the Cretans were there at that time throughout Rome. And the Cretans, all right, the Cretans is found in the scriptures and it, it basically comes from... The, uh, Cretanismo. It's a French dialect word from Cretanism. It's it's deformed, mentally retarded. Okay, it's like you, uh, you, your car's ti got timing retardation, and it's not firing right. All all functions firing right. Okay, so it's it means like a retarded person. So I can see how some uh, manuscripts, ancient manuscripts, would would emphasize that this guy Agrippa will not be using the Hebrew mindset as a Nazarene or even a Messianophile follower, but more as a Cretan, because the whole conversation is, your much learning has made you mad. Okay? So I could see that. Now, we know that the word Christian is not the same word of Christ, Christ or Christo. We think that American is the same word as America. They're two different words. Okay? And you have to look at the dictionary and look at the distinct difference. We used to always say that, oh, if you're, if you're called a Christian, you're a little anointed one. No, it doesn't even mean that. Okay? Even in, the, even in the Christian dictionaries, it just means somebody that's following the anointed one. All right? The, the, the Christ of the Greek context of, of words. Okay? So we got to get an understanding of a lot of add-on words. So here's the second word. The third word is found in... in Peter, in the book of Peter, and we're going to go to Peter chapter, we're going to first, I think I'm just going to read it out of the King Imus, the King James Version, so I can, the people that are watching, they can relate to it. So I'm going to read from the King Imus Version. We're going to go to First Peter chapter uh, 4, verse 16. So it's Aleph. Peter chapter 4 verse 16 and here's the second time the word Christian is used and we're going to start at verse 15 to give it more understanding and go uh, even further than 16 but let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer or as a busybody in other people's matters Yet if anyone suffers, now that word anyone suffers, not in the original Greek. It's got, it's got a tilt, slanted, a printing, even in the King James, letting you know it is not in the original Greek. So he's, originally he's saying, if he, as a Christian, or Cristiano, let him not be ashamed, but let him uh, be honored, Elohim, in this manner. 
Now, according to the, uh, the, the historically, this section was actually Nazarene. Okay? He was actually using the word Nazarene in the original translations, but they were, but they added it on in the year 190, okay, and, I mean, excuse me, 310. So there's, there's three words, and they all had different meanings, and they were added on eventually into match, okay? Just like we get the word Gospel, it's a German word, it's only three, three or four hundred years old, it was pancaked over a good Greek word, evangelisto or evangelist, preacher of the good news. So we know that there's a lot of pancake words going on. If you're a Christian watching this, or you got the DVD or hearing the CD, don't think I'm picking on you. Realize that there is some bad language of German and French and Scottish languages, pancake words, that are, or if you want to put on added words, okay, on top of good, clean Greek words, that just messes up the whole meaning and makes you look at something different and speak a different language of a pagan deity because the word gospel or G-O-T-T spell or G-O-D-D, depending if it's annual Saxon or German, is the sun deity spell. It's like when you look in the sun too long and it dances and, it's, and you turn away and you got this, you got this stain in your eyeball for so many minutes or a half hour, you're under a spell of the sun. The spell is the imprint on your eye lens, okay? So, there's a guy that wrote a book called Too Long in the Sun, and that basically means too long in sun worship of Catholicism and Christianity. It's a very good book if you like to get it. I recommend it, all right? So this word they believe was originally Nasrin, okay? Now, now we're going to look. There's two or three witnesses. Let every word be established. In these phrases, first of all, okay, as we look at this, Shaul, in the originally, he's really calling them Nazarene. All right? Don't suffer as a set-apart person. All right? The other one was a King Agrippa in mockery, depending on which root translation of Codex they're reading. And then the other one was straight up a king that was Greek, Roman, and he had no, he had no Hebraic understanding. They say he had enough to understand the laws to try people or communicate in disputes of arbitration among Jews and the legal system of Rome and also a Greek. What does it say in Hallelujah Scripture? It says, Nazarene, right? Matzarim, all right. Good. So even in the Hallelujah Scriptures, it gives the proper context of it. Now, we saw the Christian community what they used to call themselves. I know personally two or three witnesses let every word be established, as well as what did they really call themselves? What did the Messiah call himself? Where, what did he call himself? So what we're going to do is we're going to have some fun tonight. Let's have some fun, okay? And let's find out what the Hebrew Messiah, Yahushua, called himself. How, how many would like to do that tonight? Okay, let's do that. Let's go to... Matthew chapter 2 verse 3 now. and let's have some fun and find out what they call themselves okay we don't want to be a name it claimer and claiming ourselves to be something we're not especially if it's a bad word or a bad uh, pointing of direction of terminology so we're going to want to be, we want to be called exactly what the, what the Hebraic root believers of the followers of the Messiah should call themselves. And we're going to look at Matthew, or Matthew Yahoo, chapter 2, verse 23. And it is written in the Word, it says, And he came and he dwelt in a city called Nazareth, and it, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Nabi, or Nabiyah, Okay? He shall be called a Nazarene. Now, we're going to have some fun with this sentence. Now listen, whenever they said he was spoken by the Nabi, they, they use the word prophets in King James, they're talking about a historical information of reference in the Tanakh. Okay? In the original covenant. Matthew 22, verse 20. Oh, excuse me, chapter 2, verse 23.
okay chapter 2 verse 23 now let's have some fun he says here first of all he's got to he's got to be there uh, living there he didn't, was born in Bethlehem we know that okay so he has to be living there to fulfill a certain scripture we're going to look at this fulfillment of scripture now it says here that he says in the city called Nazareth now we know in Judges where which this prophecy came from though no city of Nazareth existed yet it was this Nazarene or Nazarite okay that city didn't exist yet it's a, it's a portion of the area of Galilee and is where the Philistines used to live okay where they used to have battles with the, with the people of Yehuda now the first word where you say he dwelt in the city of Nazarene is 3478 in the Greek and it means exactly what it means Nazareth a city and a place there's only three Hebrew there's only one Hebrew word and three Greek words in the distinct difference from the words of Nazareth Nazarene or Nazoraini okay we're gonna look at the three different words this one is 3478 take note and it means the city okay the next verse he says that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Nabi or Nabiah which we're gonna look it up which is a reference in Judges 13 5 you can write that down it's giving a reference to Judges uh, 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 13 5 excuse me now he uses the word he shall be called a what a Nazarene that word is 3480 in the Greek we're gonna play with the Greek even though we don't like to use it but we're gonna play with it, okay that Pacific word skip 79 and went exactly to 3480 which means <coughs> a set-apart follower a person that is set apart Kodesh okay that's what it means okay now now in your hallelujah scriptures does it show the distinct difference of the two words it does it's share it with me okay all right so it's like the King Imus here but I looked it up in the Greek and it shows the distinct difference he'll be called a set apart all right so it's not just and now you got to realize we're going to look at a word next word is 3479 it's right between 3478 and 3480 in the Greek and 79 is somebody that's from there that's set apart or lives there it's a distinct different word than 80 3480 80 is somebody you can be living in Jerusalem and be a Nazarene all right or take the Nazarite oath he don't have to be from the town of Galilee called Nazareth to take the oath so it's a distinct difference even in the Greek okay so we're gonna just 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 play with humor me humor yourself have some fun tonight as we look at this scriptures okay let's look at the reference in Judges or Sophatim chapter 13 verse 5 okay let's have some fun in chapter 5 13 verse 5 it is written okay he said, And behold, you shall conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come upon his head, for the child shall be a Nazarite to Elohim from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel. And we know deliver has the word of salvation in it, Yah. And he says here, Deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. Okay? So we know this is the story is beginning to arise up of Samson which was a Nazarite I have another sermon for Samson called the Nazarene gone wild <laughs> like girls gone wild but the Nazarene gone wild with the, with the Delilahs okay so and you can find that in the archives of the videos it's a fun it's a fun sermon now this particular word this particular word as we look at it is Hebrew it's 5139 there is no other language other than one word in Hebrew and it is Nazir that's what it is in Hebrew Nazir or Nazia alright and it's a set apart person that took a vow and an oath now the, the word Nazarite first is seen and you can go with me in Midbar Numbers chapter 6 verse 2 this is the first time it's ever recorded it starts in the Tanakh 
Okay? And there no city of Nazareth existed yet. You get this? No city of Nazareth existed. I actually like you to send me some blogs or email if you know a, a book that can help me with the reference exactly when Nazareth was, was built, the city, which is now occupied by the Palestinians, okay? So, but it was the place of the growing up place of our Hebrew Messiah, Yahushua. So we need to know exactly. There's theories, there's little pictures, there's information. And, but in all through the Tanakh and some of the Torah, it wasn't no city yet. It's just a place of Galilee. Okay? So let's look at this. Let's look at Numbers chapter 6, 2, and it says this. Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When either a man or a woman, what? You mean a woman too? Consecrates an offering to take a vow of a Nazarite to se separate himself or herself to capital L-O-R-D, Yohevahe, Yahuwah. So this is the first time this word has ever appeared. In the, it's in the Tanakh. And then you can look it up again in 613. It says it again. It says here, Now this is the law of the Nazarene, or the right ruling of the Nazarene. When the days of the separation are fulfilled, he shall be brought to the door of the tabernacle of Medi. Okay? And then in verse 618, uh, chapters uh, 619 and 620 through 21. So it goes all the way to the 21 about the Nazir oath. Now, in Judges 13.5 and 13.7 uh, and chapter 16.17, these are the only time the word Nazarite and there was no city yet. city didn't exist. Okay? It's, it's just a set-apart oath that they're taking with a vow of a covenant and they shave their head and they do a ritual a good ritual, clean worship, washing and a mitzvah and then they grow their hair and beard and they don't eat grapes, they, they don't uh, drink wine uh, they don't touch any, if their parents die they can't touch the dead and you can read it yourself, that's another sermon uh, but I just want you to understand, it's a set apart oath okay? we know our Messiah was a Nazarene but he superseded a lot of things. He touched the dead, but he made them alive. <laughs> so they didn't qualify as a dead person no more. Are you hearing me? He touched the, the leopard, which a Nazarene don't boast of, but he made them clean. And, and, and so in other words, he, he, it, it's, like, it, it's, like, it's like when the father had me uh, minister to a man one time. He was bleeding from a main artery and I, and I helped him. I had blood all over me. And then they, I was told later on the man had AIDS. That the, the, the historic for two years in, his, in the hospital, he had AIDS. But when I was praying for him and, and fixing him up and patching him up that artery until the medics come, I didn't know that. And I'm praying for his salvation. I'm praying for deliverance. I'm praying for healing. I'm praying for, for him to come under the, the right ruling. I'm praying for the man. Well, later on, I saw him years later, and the man was saved and delivered, and he said he didn't have AIDS no more. So what the father did to protect me from transfer of AIDS through my nostrils, my hands, and splatter, he healed them to protect me. He didn't just protect me, me and let him die. He healed him to protect my, me, his son. And, uh, and, and, and that was a great testimony and a good experience to see how the Father will protect his set-apart children. Now, so let's go now, let's continue to have fun, and let's go to Yohanan, John chapter 18. Let's see if I'm doing right here. I'm missing one verse. Oh, Mark, sorry, Marcos chapter 1-9. And we're going to go to Mark, and we're going to explore some more of the the of the the location of our Messiah's living place mark 1 9 now remember all the Tanakh and the Torah it doesn't mention the, the the city only Nazarite the vow the oath of a Nazarene there no city existed yet so it's somewhere in that 400 years of silence that that the city was built okay and we know that the place of the city of Galilee is near the location of the place where the Dead Sea Scrolls were found. And there's documentaries on Discovery Channel, History Channel, as well as in, he in Hebrew stations in Israel. They show you the history of where the Bedouin goat herder found, looking for his goat, found the Dead Seas. And they dug up a village right there, and it was a village of Nasserim. 
Nazarites. The women were Nazarites, the men were Nazarites, and they took the scrolls that were ancient and old that had the Creator's name that could not be spoken, and they do not burn them, they do not destroy them, they don't throw them away, they don't do like people do with pages of, of the uh, of the what they call the Biblos today. They they keep it set apart because it's just like your hat that has the Pelonivo name, your hair by it. They will not destroy it, it could be rotting away, but they're gonna seal it and put it, they will not burn it they would not throw it in a trash can because it has the creator's name on it just like my hat okay so they would put let it let it depart by its own decay without any human hand touching the name okay because they felt it was blasphemous to destroy anything where the name was scribed in as well okay so we're gonna we know that the Nazarenes were carriers of the scrolls or protectors of the scrolls or the caves of the scrolls of the ancient old scrolls decaying and going on they sealed them in pots and they many of them survived some books of Isaiah which survived very well uh, that they can open the scroll and it didn't fall apart. Others they had to put it together like a puzzle. Okay, so we know that these set apart ones had a set apart job. They had a, and they had a family, they had children, they had villages, and they were nomadic as well. Okay, so let's look at Mark, Marcos or Mark one nine, and it says this. It says here. Oh, I accidentally went to look. How did I do that? I was supposed to go to I actually that was an accident. That was a preparation error. <laughs> All right. Let's go to one nine and it says this. And it came to pass in those days that Yahushua came from Nazareth of Galilee and was emerged by Yohanan in the the Jordan. The Jordan. Okay? So he came from there, he came from that city, and this particular Greek word is the 3437, okay? Now let's look at the next verse on Yohanan chapter 18, John chapter 18, verse 5. Chapter 18, verse 5, and it says, now another a little hint of information. They answered him in verse 5, and Yahushua of Nazareth, or Nazareth, Yeshua said to them, I am he, and, and Judas, oh, that's not his real name, that's a Catholic add-on word, who betrayed him also stood with them. Now let's look at this verse carefully. In my nice, beautiful King Imus Thomas chain, which you would see on the screen when I finally edit this video, okay, it says, as a footnote, it has a letter A in front of Yeshua. And then, it, and then it has, for references, a one on the OF, where it says, of Nazareth. Okay? It links me with a chain reference on the same page, and it links me to 34880, 3480, the Greek reference of a Nazarene O, a keeper, a set-apart follower. Now... It also says literally the Nazarene. The word of, O-F, is an add-on, English word. It didn't exist back then, even in the Greek. And they put the of, excuse me, Nazareth instead of ha Nazarene. The Hebrew word ha, the, H-A is like Hashem, the name, okay, Ha Nazarene, it would be in Hebrew. So it would be Yahushua Ha Nazarene, which means he's Yahushua, the set apart one. Okay? And there, now listen carefully 3480 is 13 times found in the New Te Covenant, a total of 81 times. The word Nazareth is in the New Covenant, but it's covering 13 times the word Ha Nazoroin. Okay? The set apart one. Okay? So it's a pancake word. It actually covers 3479 and 3480. 
and they use only 3478. And this is in the, in the in the you could go to Esort, you could go to Strong's Hebrew, you could go to Zandervan, Richardson, all those concordances, and it's right there in your face, the 13 word cover up. And here in my King Inus, the Thomas Chain reference says its literal translation was the set apart one Nazaroin. Okay? So it would be in the Hebrew, not in the English language, the word of. Okay? And I'm glad they put that little little secret code, little hint there of what it really is. So mark it down, 3480, the ha nasorain. Okay? Now, let's look now at Math Mathanyahu chapter 21, verse 11. And we're going to keep having fun here. This is some fun stuff because we're, we're going to get to the place where our Messiah, out of his mouth, what he said. Out of his mouth, he said what he was. And the, the believers, the disciples that were Hebrew, and the 70 disciples that were Hebrew, and all the ambassadors, the emissaries that were Hebrew, they too were calling themselves a certain word. And it wasn't Christianos, like the emperor of Rome proclaimed, the first pope, emperor. Pope Emperor of Rome, Caesar Emperor of Pope. <laughs> okay, so now let's look at Matthew chapter 21, verse 11, and it says this. So the multitude said, This is Yahushua, the Nabiim, or Nabi, from Nazareth of Galilee. All right? In this context, an eyewitness, this is a testimony, an eyewitness says he is operating under the gift of the Nabi. Okay? Not the word prophet, but Nabi. And he lives in Nazareth in the, in the county area of Galilee. Okay? And that is the Greek word 3478, which means the place, Nazareth. Okay? That's 3478. And now we're going to look at 2671, how it just changes all of a sudden. So he told him where he's from. He's from the, he's from the barrio of Nazareth. He's from the neighborhood of Nazareth in the county of Galilee. Okay? So let's look at 2671, and it's written. Twenty six seventy one. He says, and when he had gone out of the gateway, another girl saw him. The girl is an add-on word. It doesn't exist there. Another saw him and said to the, those there, this fellow or also was with Yahushua, but he says here Jesus of Nazareth, but it is set 3480, literal translation, Yahushua ha. Nazoroin, the set apart one. Okay? This is 3480. That word F 13 times doesn't belong there. That's, a, that's an English language word. It's, a, it's amazing how one word can change the whole thing. Like Maryam. They call him Mary Magdala, and she was really Maryam from the town of Magdala. Okay, so if one little word could change. You think that that's her last name? No, that was the town she was from. It's like they say they would say um, our, our 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 brother here. They would say they would call him by his new Hebrew name and say from San Antonio, from SA. Are you from West SA or South or East SA, brother? Where you from? <laughs> okay, but they would say SA San Antonio and. And then they would turn around and change the, just a few words and say your name and put San Antonio, Texas as your last name, which would not be good. In the military, they play that game. In the military, because there's so many guys, uh, there's so many Johns, so many Roberts, so many Franks, they, 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 like, they called me Robert from California. Because there's like 30 Roberts in the barracks. And so, they, you know, they had a little Robert from Oklahoma, Robert from whatever, you know what I mean? So, or John from San Francisco, and because there's 10 Johns, you know what I mean? So that's what they did in a mistranslation way, and it takes a meaning away of who they really are. But in this one, it's Yahushua Ha Nazorain. All right? So he's the set apart one. It's the Greek word 3480. That's the fun stuff to learn. Okay, now, 
Now let's look at, let's play with uh, Mark chapter 10, 47. Mark 10, 47. There's much to scriptures to give, so I'm only going to give so many, and then I'm going to quote them so you can do your own, you can do your own fun research on this stuff. I'm not going to let you get away with it uh, so easy, so you're going to do your own research on Esword. And you can go to Mark 10:47, and it says this. And it says, And when he heard that it was Yahushua of Nazareth, or Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. I'm sorry for using the Zeus word, excuse me, but I want to, I want to put you to show you the distinct difference. Now let's read it in the proper Hebrew with mixture of English. And when he heard that it was Yahushua, this is 3480 again, ha, Nazoroin, the set apart one, he began to cry out and say, Yahushua ben David, have compassion on me. Okay? That's the proper way it's spoken in, uh, to that Hebrew man that was crying out for healing that day. Now, you can go to Luke 18.37. That's another one. Ha. The word ha, Nazarene. No, O-F for of. Luke 24.19. Yohanan, John 18.5. All the same, 34.80. The of didn't exist. It was ha the, okay. Yohanan eighteen seventeen a seven. So there's verse five and seven very close together, okay. Now we're gonna play with one because it's very unique, all right. We're gonna go to Yohanan chapter nineteen verse nine. Now I'm giving you these other ones. There's no reason to go to it. You could do, you could play with it yourself later on, and and, and prove me wrong if those it's not thirty four eight eighty. Okay, so it's it's chapter nineteen, verse nine of Johann Yokohanan Johannin. And it's verse nine. And they put it in big giant capital letters. And it happened to be Pilate that did it. Okay? Pilate writes this. Now Pilate wrote a title and put it on the the stake that our master was crucified and the writing was 3480 Yahushua Ha Nazarim the sovereign of the Yehudis chapter 19 verse 19 I'm sorry it's chapter 1919 I gotta correct it right here I'll make my notes I just did these notes had fun with it the other day so it's supposed to be chapter 1919. That's kind of, is that a code right there? <laughs> chapter 19, verse 19. Okay. Pilate himself that spoke in his language, in between his language of Greek, Roman, wrote himself the Hebrew correct translation. He was Yahushua Ha, the set apart one, the Nazarene. Okay. He did that to get back to the Yehudi. All right? Just saying the J man from the town of Nazareth of Galilee would not hurt the Jews. Would it hurt the Jews if using the word, the set apart word, you know what I mean? And, and using his real name, Yahushua. That's what re really hurt the Yehudi at that time. The, I wouldn't even say Yehudi, it was just the leaders, it was the Sanhedrin. It's like called the federal courthouse, just hurting the courthouse a little bit, okay? So let's look, again, okay, you can go to Maashi, chapter 2, verse 22. Maashi, or Acts, chapter 3, verse 6. You can write that down too. Chapter 4, verse 10. Again, these are all 3480. It's supposed to be Ha, Nazarayim. Okay? Now, Let's look at the word I didn't give you, 3479 in Mark 124. This is the word in Greek I did not give you yet. So we're going to look at that word, because there's only three Greek words that they pancake uh, the town of Nazareth on. Okay? And it's chapter 
1 verse 24 Marcos 1 verse 24 this this fan right here is having a good time with me all right mark 1 24 and it is written we already read 9 verse 9 now we're going to read verse 24 and it says this saying let us alone what have we to do with you all right did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the set apart one. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, this was 30, this was 34. Oh, this is 3479, the Greek word. Okay? Not 3478, the city, and not 3480. Now who's talking here? It's an unclean spirit. It's a demon. It's a familiar spirit. The demon says this: let us alone. What have we to do with you, Yahushua? There is no of. And he says, ha. But he's not using the word Nazarain or Nazarite. He's using the word, right? Let me look it up right here. Let me get it right for the gainsayers. Anybody trying to catch us, all right? And it's Nazarai, Nazarit in the Greek. Which means twofold. It means he's from the town of Nazareth and he's set apart. So the demon even said he knows he's from the town of Nazareth and he is the set apart Nazarene. It's a dual, it's a dualism word. All right. It's, it's not the positive one, 3480, straight up set apart. And, but he calls him, he says here in response, the unclean spirit, I know who you are. Kodesh, Kodeshi one of Elohim, the set apart one. So he's magnifying, even if he's using the word, the, you live in the city, you're called one, and he's magnifying. The demons even know what he is, a set apart one, and where is he from? Okay? And you can read the rest of the story about the unclean spirit. All right. Now let's look at what the Messiah called himself. Let's have some fun here. All right? We know that in Luke 126, Mary and Joseph were from Nazareth. We know in chapter 2, verse 39 and 40 of Lucas, they went back home to their town from Bethlehem. They called it their hometown. In chapter 4 of Luke, verse 16, he says, where Yahushua grew up. All right? in the town of Nazareth. Those are all 3478, the letter, the, the, the Greek word 78. Okay, But let's find out what he said out of his own mouth. And there's several verses. And we're going to start off with Acts 614. This is 3480 again. The Greek word 3480. And Maashi, or Acts 6. You can start off at 614. And we're going to find out a little bit more. I want to know what my Messiah called himself and what the disciples called themselves. I know they were followers of the way. They were disciples. Hundreds of times mentioned. Okay, they were believers. They called themselves believers. And that Greek word for the believer as a disciple is a strong Greek word for somebody that is dedicated learning in order to learn and teach others as a disciple. Okay? So being called a disciple was good. All right, being called a Nazarene, set apart was good. It's good to be called a Nazarene. Okay, so let's look at six fourteen, and it says this. He says, and uh, it says here, for we have heard him say that this thirty four eighty Yahushua Ha Nazarene will destroy this place and change the customs which Moshe delivered to us. Okay. They're trying to slander him. He want, yeah, the, the Messiah wanted to get rid of the, 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 the Talmudic customs that were the verbal law or the Babylonian Talmud, but he didn't want to change the Torah customs, okay? Because he was keeping them himself. Now let's have fun. 22, verse, chapter 22, verse 8 of Maashi. 22, verse 8. Uh, 
22 verse 8. Now this is the Thomas Chain King Imus edition with red letters, right? And it says here in verse 8, once you get it to say Ha'ad Amin, chapter 22, verse 8. You got to keep your notes on this. This is a fun one. Out of his own mouth. I use this verse for other things, okay? But I, when I went back to it, it blew my mind. I never saw it that way. And he says here, So I answered, Who are you, Master? And he said to me, I am... <laughs> In red letters, Yahushua Ha the Nazaroim, whom you are persecuting. So he called himself the Messiah, the creator of this earth. He called himself Yahushua Ha. Not, there's no OF. That didn't exist even in the Greek language. This is an add on filler word. It's called a filler word to fill in the words in our language of English. But by doing that, it actually distorts what the sentence says. It's red letters. He's calling himself. He's not from the town, even though he was raised there. He's not born there. Okay? Now, what is happens with you and your taxes with your Social Security? When you look up your social security number, it don't tell you that you're living in Banny. It says where you're born. You got that? If I'm born in the old California Jewish hospital in Los Angeles, my social security number, my ID number, where I'm born, is there in California. Okay? So even though I moved somewhere else, they said, no, you're, you're registered L.A., California, man. That's your registration number. Okay? But he was raised there because his parents were there. They were called out. They left to Egypt. They went to Bethlehem. He was born. Remember, they had the census. And then after that, he went back to the hometown. It wasn't his hometown. It was his parents' town. But he was born in Bethlehem. So his ID number under Caesar, because remember, they were registered. He had to put Mariam, Yoshef, and Yahushua. They ID'd him in Bethlehem. And he paid taxes to Bethlehem. Because that's where you're born. Our state taxes, if, if you're, even if you move to San Antonio, Texas, it's going to, it's, the state will go to San Antonio. But your federal has a code and it go, leads to Rome. It leads to where you're born. Okay, mine will be California, L.A. Okay, in the federal, in the federal uh, lineup. But we're just playing around with that understanding, with the, looking back then in the Caesar Greek mentality. He says, yeah, I am. The Messiah said, I am. He said, Ayah. Are you ready for this? Ayah. Ayah. Ayah, right? So he says, Ayah. Ha. Nazarene. Set apart. I am the set apart one. Okay, he's locking up. It's in red letters. He's calling himself that. Now let's find now. Let's look at let's look at twenty six now. Maashi chapter twenty six verse nine. Acts twenty six nine. Come on, girls, you got to look at it. Turn your pages. Look at it with your eyeballs. Those are gateways into your inner being <laughs> and the renewed of the mind. You don't want people to say, well, where did you hear this? Well, but the preacher was preaching it. Did you ever see the scripture where it's at? No, just remember he said it. No, you got to say, I saw it with my own eyeball, my own two eyeballs. And I heard it with my two ears. <laughs> and it went in between my heart <laughs> and my inner man. Okay? All right. So now, 26.9, it says this. Oh, I went too far. 26 verse 9. And he says here, Indeed, I myself thought I must do many things contrary to the Shem of Yahushua Ha Nazarene. Verse 9, 26. He was persecuting. And he said he had to do everything against the character, the name of Yahushua the Nazarene. Ha! Nazarene. Okay? Now, let's look what he calls himself now. That's what he was giving his testimony in chapter 20. So he's giving his testimony, what he was doing before. Now, let's give him a few years. Let's give him some time. Let's, let's see another testimony of what he said before somebody. 
And let's go back to chapter 24. And let's look at another portion of his testimony. Okay. Acts 24, Ma'ashi 24, verse 5. And we're also going to look at 10 and 4 through 14. And he says this. For we have found this man a plague, a problem, a creator of dissension, dissension among all the Yehudi throughout the world or the age. A ringleader of the sect of who? The Nazarenes, the set apart ones. I mean, if they were to run us into court, and they take us before the federal magistrate said, you are found guilty of being a Nazarene. That would be an honor. <laughs> you say, you, you finding me guilty for being set apart? <laughs> Good, man. Yeah, I'm set apart. I didn't think I was that set apart to go to jail and be persecuted. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and when other preachers, they'll call them up, you're not so set apart. You had sex with that girl. We took pictures and you're going to do what we told you to do, preacher. And you're going to stop preaching against the government. You're going to stop preaching against this other, the Catholic Church. Because we took pictures of you with your girlfriend, your little white girlfriend. You know, happens to be Paula. <laughs> Tina shakes her head. Right? All right, so. All right. Sorry if anybody's named Paula. Right? I'm just saying it like it is, okay? And so we found you out, so you're going to have to obey us. You've been found guilty, and you're going to have to submit to whatever they secretly told them to. But wouldn't it be nice to go before a court and they said, "You're the ringleader. You're not just you're not just one of the sect. You're the you're the L, the mighty one. You're the you're the number one guy, the ringleader that's causing." He didn't say giving problems to L.A. County, Riverside County. He said the world, the known world of Rome. I mean, that was a compliment to tell this brother this stuff. I mean, that wasn't a bad thing, but this is an accuser to try to find a way of hurting him. Now, let's look at verse 10 and get his answer. Did he deny it? Let's find out. And Shaul, after the governor had noted to him to speak, so they all spilled their information, inasmuch as I know that you have been for many years a judge of this nation I do more cheerfully answer for myself gives the guy a compliment pretty good using finesse in court he knows how to use finesse puffing him up because you may ascertain that it is no more than 12 days since I went up to Jerusalem to worship and they neither found me in the temple disputing with anyone nor inciting a crowd, either in, in the synagogues or in the city. Nor can they prove the things of which they now accuse me of, except one thing. But this I confess to you, that according to the way, and the word way, you can look it up in the concordance, that's what the, many of the believers call themselves, the believers of the way. And it's a capital W-A-Y in the King Imus, and that has a reference to a Greek word of the belief of the way of the Messiah. There's different words for way in the Greek, and this one with the capital letter in the middle of a sentence doesn't fit. It's been proper penmanship or a misprint. No, it ain't. It is another code in the King Imus language. Like they put a capital N for name for Hashem. Well, this is a capital W for way. That's another teaching. Which they call a sect. Who? The sect of the Nazarene. The way. I, I'm guilty of it. He says, this I confess to you, man. I'm guilty of the way they call the sect. So I worship Elohim of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the right ruling, in the Torah or the law, and in the Nabi'im. The same reference of judges that he shall be called a Nazarene. Okay? So he didn't deny it. He actually said, okay, all that other stuff, not true. But being part of the way they call a sect of the Nazarene, there's no problem, man, I'm guilty. What are you going to do, judge? 
You know what I mean? You're going to convict me? It's not in your law book of Rome to convict of somebody that's a good citizen. I don't, I don't run red lights. I stop at the white line before the stop sign. My chariot, my mule does not go past it. I don't go through the alley streets real fast with my mule running over people. I'm not speeding down Jerusalem and going through the dung gate in a hurry. I'm not doing no crime against Rome except being set apart, which means a good citizen. Because if you're a Nazarene, you follow the rules of everything except if it's contrary to your word. Of, of the Torah, of the Tanakh. Okay? So have some fun with that. I, I, I just want you to note that. Now, our Messiah called himself a Nasarawoin, a set apart one. The, the disciple, the messenger, the emissary, the ambassador, Shaul, he called himself that without denial. He was accused of it. He did not deny it. So what do we call ourselves? Our Messiah called himself a set-apart one. In red letters. When we know his hometown was Shamarim. He was the son of the, the father. So he could say, Yahushua of a the or ha. Shamarim. But instead he's used the word Nasarim. The set apart one. Okay? Thirteen times it's mentioned compared to one Christian word that was a mistake. Another Christian word that was covered with the he from the Hebrew word and another one that was called an idiot. Okay? So what are you going to call yourself? We're going to call ourselves a set apart one. Like our Messiah and like the messengers that we went before the Messiah. Like the emissaries, the ambassadors of the Messiah. I hope you like this study and this stream. I, I, if you have any questions, any information, if you'd like us to send you the free little tiny pamphlets we have of uh, information we have, especially of, of the, a correction of the replacement theo theologies, we'd be glad to send it to you. Just email you that contact list and we'll send that to you for free. You can look at our links of different partners and friends on the right side of the front page of the video homepage, and you can see the links and get a lot of good studies and teachings. I recommend them. They're not there just to be fill in our face of our homepage. They're highly recommended uh, to research. Father, we are so grateful that right there in our face is the word of what our Messiah and what the ambassadors, the emissaries, call themselves in reference to the prophecy, or should I say, the Nabi'in, the Nabi'ah, that was given, the word that was given by your messengers of the future of what they be called. So there's a reference in the Tanakh for the future, and our Messiah called himself continually those words. And so we thank you that we're set apart, we're striving to be set apart, into perfection which means maturity in the Hebrew and we thank you for it Father we thank you for the people that are tuned in today watching we pray that this word will not come back void or fall in stony grounds or in in thorns and bristles but they would be bear fruit and good ground and teach others everything we pray we're teaching others that they may learn as a good disciple in order to teach others as well in Yeshua's name we pray and Baruch Hashem Yahuwah, our Elohim. Amen.